Yo, 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 what's up my kings, my g's, and my gens? Really quick before we get this video started, I just want to let you know that I appreciate every single one of you. Every single one of you that liked my video, every single one of you that commented on my video, that subscribed it, that shared it to people. Y'all the true family, the true Javi Clips family, the true Clips, the true Clips family. I'll come up with a name, you feel me? <laughs> I'll come up with a name for all of us, but first thing we're doing is going in with our white barber pencil And this specific white pet barber pencil is made by the company called black eyes and you could find them on Amazon I'll definitely leave a little link on my description below so y'all could check that out and with this white barber pencil I only use this when I do designs the reason why I use this when I make designs is because I'm not that experienced with designs like the caption said, like the title said to this video, I almost messed my brother up. <laughs> you feel me? I, something along the lines of that. I almost messed him up just because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what type of design I was trying to go for. This is still brand new to me. Like, I'm nice. I'm okay at fading. I'm nice at fading, I feel like. But design-wise, I'm not the best. You feel me? I'm still learning. I still got to humble myself because I'm not the best barber out there. And y'all see that. But I try to keep it real with y'all. And I try to pass on my, my, my little experiences with you too. If you feel like you're not the best with designs, buy a little barber pencil, a little white pencil, and then you could trace out your designs and then hit it with the trimmers, just how I did right here. And you see, I'm just not even going that deep with the trimmers either. I'm literally just tapping it. I'm just tapping and going, just making my little indentations for where I want my lines to be. And when I do start making it sharp, that's when I start hitting it with my razor. That's when I start making that line wider. That's when I start making parts more defined than others. You feel me? And all I'm doing right here is just doing it with both my hands. I got really steady ass hands. And to avoid less problems, I even hold his head. So that way, if he does end up moving, I run less of a risk of messing up his whole design. Now, you don't want to do that to the man. Come on, my man. That's the worst feeling ever. And I know that, but sometimes you got to mess some people up to get better. Now I'm just trying to take all that white pencil out of there, out of his head, so I can see where my lines are at. I just hit it with the razor right now and you can tell right here I'm pulling and stretching his skin away from where I'm cutting. The reason why you want to do this is because you do not want to cut your client. You could give him the freshest fade there is on the planet, you could give him the best haircut there is, but if he got a few nicks consistently every time because you don't stretch the skin, I promise you your client's about to dip. You don't want to get scabbed up every time he gets a haircut. And this is the part where you have to take your time, you gotta be careful you don't speed it up just because you want to rush through the haircut. You just want to be safe and you want to make sure the client leaves the way he came in. Not exactly, you know, he he, he left with a fresh ass fade, but he left uncut, you know, nothing too crazy. I know accidents happen, but you know, tr just try to avoid that as much as you can. My camera died, but I did do a whole, I spalled out the whole bottom of his head and it kind of dipped down into the back towards that little design as you see right there right below that you feel me you still want to leave some space there to blend upwards but now we're just hitting it with that foil shaver you want to go really lightly and you kind of want to scoop outwards and by lightly you do not want to press on the head don't press into the hair right here i'm going with my no guard and my lever is completely open i'm just going up about an inch or so to give myself enough room to blend in from that t-liner triple zero up to that no guard with the lever open right and i'm still doing that in the back over here you see how big i left my guideline to give myself enough room to fade so now right here i'm just gonna go with my half guard open and i'm just gonna bring that all the slightly below where i went with my no guard fully open once i do that you see me right here i just change the lever with my no guard completely closed right here and then i'm just taking out that bottom line still just going really late and scooping outwards you can't see it as much but after a while you're just gonna notice what i mean by scooping outwards you could kind of tell right here i'm just going outwards a little bit i'm not going too crazy i'm not going too deep sometimes you might have to depending on how you made your first guideline though it's all trial and error you will learn so you go from your no guard halfway open you go slightly before below where you did your no guard fully open and then you hit that bottom line out with the no guard fully closed right here i'm just going with my one and a half guard fully closed 
and I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm just going up about an inch and then I'm just, <laughs> my man's sleeping. And then I'm just going with my number one guard fully open, going slightly below where I did my one and a half guard. And then I'll go to my one guard halfway open and then go slightly below. And then I'll go with my one guard closed and then go slightly be below that. And you're going to see right here, it's slowly taking that line out, but it's not going to completely take that out. And that's when you hit it with your point, point 0.5 guard or your 16th guard. And you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to go with your point 0.5 guard open and then halfway open and then close. But make sure you want to go really late because you do not want to create any more heavy lines. And you see how clean this came out? You see how dope this came out? Sheesh. You're going to do the exact same steps in the back, my Gs. The exact same steps. Go with your one guard open and then halfway open and then close and then go with your point five guards point five guard open halfway open and then close and i promise you it'll take out that line like crazy back here though his head is a little bit thicker so i did have to go in a little bit with my no guard open and i just hit the corners a little bit use my corners to try to take out any line i see and you see how crazy that's looking like i kind of messed them up you could see right there i'm just thinking about like yo what the hell do i do with this and you know what i did like, you see, I'm thinking about that. Like, I'm like, oh, do I do it? Do I do it? But I end up doing it. So what I envision right here is I'm going to skin out the front and then let it just get darker towards it goes towards the back, right? So you, you see me, I'm just skinning it out. I'm, uh, I'm still a little iffy, but I committed to it. I already did it. It's whatever. You just have to commit. It didn't really take it out that much, right? It, it still looks like there's a heavy line there because I hit it with the razor. So what I end up doing is grabbing my uh, wall detailers, which are really, really sharp, and I end up hitting that instead. You see that? And at this point, I just got to commit. Now we're just going to go about an inch or so with our no guard open. Oh, oh, my man. You see, this is what I meant by holding your client's head. You feel me? Just to avoid the problem of you messing up a haircut. So I'm going to go with my no guard open about an inch. And then right below, I, right below that, I'm going to go with my no guard halfway open like you just saw then. Now with my, with my no guard closed and right below that. And you see how easy it took that line out? Oof. I still end up playing with the lever just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, according to how it's looking, I just play with my lever, see, and I try to take out any dark patches that's there, still using my corners. Right here, I'm just using my .5 guard, and I'm using my corners trying to take that top out, because you know why? It already kind of blends into the back side, so I don't really have to blend in the rest of that little design. So now I'm just going to hit it with the razor a little bit more. Mind you, mind you, I said... Pull away from it where you're cutting because you do not want to cut the climb, bro. You, you know, you cut Chris Brown. You don't want to cut Chris Brown. You feel me? <laughs> you don't want to Chris, cut Chris Brown. You got a photo shoot. You feel me? You, you got to keep that mindset. Now I'm just adding a little bit of semi-permanent hair dye. This is made by, I believe, Kiss Express. And uh, this is Darkest Brown. Just because I feel like black is a little too black. You feel me? So I'm just using Darkest Brown and I'm just adding it to the little edges of that design to make that line pop out just a little bit more you don't have to use too much do not add too much just a little bit just make that pop out a little bit more you feel me and damn my man is looking good so far honestly i thought i messed up i really did but it's, it's looking really dope right now same thing with this just hitting with the razor pulling away from where you're cutting look at that with the little finesse Yo, you see my man still sleeping. <laughs> Yo, he was so tired this day, bro. He was. Yo, you could just see him. So right here, I got my number two guard open. And then with my number two guard closed, I'm just hitting the that little line. You see that little line right there? I'm just hitting that with the corners. Just using the corners because I don't want to push that fade up higher. Because I don't want to push that fade up higher, I'm using the thinning shears and just going at that line. I'm just starting a little bit below that line and going upwards, going up and out, you know? That didn't do that much, so I ended up going with my number one and a half, and I'm just doing a little bit of detail work right here. I'm going with my number one and a half open, and then I use my number one and a half halfway open. You saw that? 
and then I'm gonna go with my number one and a half close and mind you I'm still using the corners as well I'm just trying to fade everything out as much as I can and the back's starting to look really faded out as well this is mind you this is kind of like a high skin fade you just want to blend everything as much as you can up to the top so right here I'm just doing a little bit of point cutting I prefer this type of style this type of style of cutting when you do textured hair when it looks like it's already messy when it looks like it already has product in there that's to like a messy type of look a spiky kind of look i really like this t form of cutting and if the client doesn't really want that they want some more cleaner some that looks clean you know you just do really blunt cuts but or you're cutting straight across instead of every other hair and it's really fun to do this type of style because you don't really have to be perfect you don't some people are like oh that's a little bit lazy but no nah, no nah, it just doesn't have to be perfect you could mess up a perfect you could mess up a messy haircut by not making it look messy you feel me being very very careful i'm just lining up the sides and if you're not that comfortable with using one hand i would definitely recommend using two just how I'm still using two, even though I'm an experienced barber. Because I have shaky hands and I know myself. If I use one hand, I'm def I'm bound to make more of a mistake. Same thing for the backside. While I'm there, I'm just trimming up the backside of his beard, making that go straight down. I don't want to go back and forth to one side of the face to the other when I can just make it all out at once. For the neck beard, for the neckline, I just like going straight across. Will work for me is just going straight across. It, it just makes it so much more even. At least in my my experience, I know other people like doing one side and then they go to the other side. But whatever really works for you. I also like leaning them back. It makes it easier on me and it makes it easier on them. That way they don't have to keep their heads up. And I know that can be really straining on the neck. And that way I don't have to bend down as much. When I do the mustache as well. When I line up the top of the the bottom of the mustache, actually, I try to line it up with the direction that their lip goes. I try to make it parallel with the direction of his lips. And I use both my hands as well. Y'all see this? I use two hands. I don't have a problem saying I can do a shape over one hand, you know? I'm not trying to prove anything to anyone. I just want to make sure that my client leaves my chair satisfied. And I feel like you should do that as well. Just make sure that your client is satisfied. Don't care about what other barbers are telling you. Just do what, what they like, what they love. And they'll appreciate you for that. For the lineup, it's really, really simple. Just go for the beard, actually. I feel like that's a little harder. But I just go in one swift little movement, still pulling on the skin. You saw that? And then I just take off any extra hairs that I see on top of his cheek. If you want a more detailed video on how to do a beard, please let me know in the comment section below and I will do that. You see, I'm just going one swift little movement. So that way it's just one perfect curve. Damn, that's looking nice. And I'm just hitting that back part up a little bit too. You see my little different change up in angles when I do shave that back part up. Nah, I really outdid myself with this cut. I thought I was gonna really mess my brother up. And honestly, this is probably one of the more nervous haircuts I've done. It's because I, like I said, I really didn't know what I was doing. And for it to come out the way that it did right here, that's amazing. And right here, you're just seeing me do the mustache up, the other side of the beard, just one swift movement. Try to pull away from where you're cutting. That way you do not cut anyone or you lose that possibility of cutting someone, you know? Still doing a little bit more detail work because I just see a little bit of a line back there. Just a little dark patches, you feel me? Don't be afraid to go back and make that haircut as perfect as it can be. The client will look at you and appreciate that because I've seen so many clients be like, yo, you took your time. I feel like you didn't rush to cut. And that's that's a dope feeling. This is my 245 compressor cut. Ooh, my shorty got this for me for Christmas and I've been loving this since. I love this uh, semi-permanent hair dye. All it does is just 
you know, make that hairline, the, make the shape up pop a little bit, fill in the beard a little bit. What this does, it stains the skin. All I'm doing is just making this really, really sharp just by hitting it with the razor one more time. And I love using this. I love it for like patchy beards or like to fill in a, a hairline that isn't completely straight, you know? Over here, I'm just adding a little bit more. You can adjust how much you add to it depending on how far or close you are to the hair. Look at that, look at that. That's, that's looking nice. That's looking nice, my Gs. And I appreciate you for staying here this long. And listening to my voice <laughs> it could get annoying sometimes i understand but i appreciate you so very much i was about to cuss me you know i'm trying to get that bread i'm not trying to cuss all this you feel me you know right now i'm just fading in the beard as well like i said if you have any questions or if you want something specific to watch for me to show you that i don't really go into details like fading out a beard then just let me know my man sheesh my man's looking nice right now stop playing with the kid my man's looking nice and i'm just going in a little bit with that beard just trying to make sure he looks nice all that did was just stain the skin a little bit so his beard looks a little fuller and you can see it right there look at how thick that beard got you feel me damn son that's looking dope. That's looking really dope. We're just hitting him off with a little bit of Slick Gorilla Styling Powder. And I really love this just because it's really easy. It's really mess free. And a lot of my clients like it just because you, they put it in their hair and they get to go. And they don't have time to like style themselves, you know? That's what my man's was looking like. This is what the big bro was looking like right before. And yo, you're not even, you're not even ready. You not even ready When I came in here I thought I was gonna mess him up But your boy Professor Clips Came in the clutch He got a 360 no scope You know what he did? You know what he did? He got my man's Bitties lined up Outside the barbershop Look at that He got the beard The eyebrows The messy top The high skin fade That's just on one side Of the beard right? You see that little fade Go into that Design Ooh <laughs> Yo, I'm hyping myself up. Let me humble my ass up a little bit. <laughs> Let me humble my ass up a little bit. I hope you like this design. I hope you like the video. I appreciate every single one of you for checking this out. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Till next time, you're a fam.